Moving into now section 6.4. So today's game plan, 6.4, 6.5. I'm also going to cover half of 6.6, and it won't be due. You know, we'll cover half of it. It won't be due. We won't cover all of it yet, but we want to do a lot of it. 6.4 and 6.5 today. Things get a little messier today. A little messier business today, and then tomorrow's all word problems. This chapter holds more challenge than the other chapters, as we talked about. Our next exam is next Wednesday. Wednesday, is that true? No, Tuesday. Wow, comes quick. Tuesday, practice is at Monday already. Yeah. So practice exam number four is Monday, and exam number two, uh, four is Tuesday. That's the hardest one. Most people's lowest grade is exam number four. It's the one that's coming up. It's because of all this mess and because of what we'll do tomorrow. Lots of word problems tomorrow and complex fractions. The name just sounds bad, doesn't it? Complex fractions and word problems and more word problems on Monday. Today's ugly business. It's all this stuff. So this is the stuff. This is where people start to have trouble. So I'm not meaning to discourage you, but to encourage you. It's like the coach saying, this is a big opponent. Let's buck up. Let's, let's do what it takes. What does it take? You just got to be a math genius or just forget it. No. That's what some people think. That's not the truth. You can do it. We have lots of help. Roberto, right? I'm pointing to his hours in the back. What's Roberto over there today? Wednesday, 2 to 4. Yeah, he'll be there after class today. Roberto will be there. So if you don't get this stuff, go to the, go to the tutoring center. Do your homework right there. Roberto will be there. He'll, he'll show you the same way I showed you. He won't show you a different way. He's there for help. You can go over these YouTubes. I'll load these YouTubes up. You can go over them, watch me do the problems again and again, you know, and practice them. The help you need is there if you'll put the time in. All right, let's do it. So um, x squared plus 17x over x squared minus 4x plus x squared minus 6x over x squared minus 4x. Okay, add in fractions. How do you add two fractions? What's the deal with adding fractions? Well, got to have common denominators, don't we? And we do. These denominators match, don't they? They're common denominators, right? So they're good. So keep the common. Keep the common denominator. And then x squared and x squared, add them up, x squared and x squared, 2x squared. So I'm just combining the two tops. We have a common denominator, so I'm combining the two tops. x squared and x squared is 2x squared. We're, we're just adding, right? So we don't mess with powers. We just add the numbers in front. 1x squared and 1x squared is 2x squared. 17x minus 6x is, what's that, 11x? Yeah. Okay. Now, remember what we learned yesterday about factoring and canceling. Can I just, like, cancel those x squareds right now? Why not? Costco says no. Huh. Right? The plus and minuses, they're glued together. Remember, remember what pluses and minuses do. They glue things together. So it's a package deal. You can't buy part of the package. You either buy the whole 2x squared plus 11x, or you don't touch it, right? You can't, you can't just take part of it. I'm going to have to rewrite this whole thing. I messed it all up now with wrong math. So, um, okay. So instead, what do we do? How do we get around that Costco glue problem? We simplify factor, right? Yeah, well, how can you factor the top? What, what can we do with the top to factor it? Take out an X, huh? Take out an X in common on the top. What does that leave behind? 2X and 11. Good? So far, so good on the bottom, on the top. Now for the bottom. What can I do on the bottom to factor the bottom? Is that bottom? That's an FL, right? FL, X squared, X minus 2, X plus 2. No, I see that mistake a lot. That's not right. That's not an FL. Why not? <coughs> yeah, it's not. If it was just minus 4, yeah, that'd be FL. X plus 2, X minus 2. But it's 4X. So what does that mean? That means take out what's in common. What do they have? X. Yeah, watch out. I see that mistake a lot. Does everybody see that? It's not. It's, it's, it's a 4X. So instead, they have X in common. 
Take it out. Good. And then we can cancel the x's. So the answer is 2x plus 11 over x minus 4. There we go. Good on that one? Not too bad? So with fractions, adding and subtracting fractions, it's all about common denominator, isn't it? Common denominator. Any questions? Shall we move on? Flash off. Let's do this one. Okay, I've got 11. I'm going to... I'm going to make those an x over 35x plus 4 over 25x. Okay. So we want to add those two fractions. What do we need to make happen if we're going to add those two fractions? Common denominator. We're going to make the bottoms the same, right? Common denominator. So, so you're going to have to find the common denominator for 35 and 25. How do you do that? Yeah, that, that box thing we learned yesterday, right? So go over here on the side and put 35 and 25 in the LCD box. Okay, so what goes into 35 and 25? 5 does, right? 5 does. 5 goes into 35. 7 times 5 goes into 25, 5 times. And nothing else, not, and what goes into 7 and 5? Nothing, right? So we're done there. Multiply these guys together. Remember how to do the LCD boxes? What is that? Um, 175, thank you. 175. So that means we're going to make them both into 175. We need the x also, right? So we're going to make both denominators become something they are not, 175x. So how do we make both those denominators become 175x? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. you got to find out what, what they need to multiply. You can do that by dividing, right? Two ways. You can do it by dividing, or you can just look at what we did with the LCD thing. Both ways will work. In other words, you can take seven, 175 and divide it by the old denominator, by the 35, and it'll tell you what you need, and it'll tell you 5 is what you need. And so that, that's what we'll do top model. The other way is just to look over here. Look at this. Over here, this is the guts of a 175. It's what's the innards, the insides of a 175 is two fives and a seven. So what? Well, if 35 already has a five and a seven, what else does he need to become 175? He needs another five. You know what I mean? You can just look over here and say, look, 35 is already five times seven. There's 35 right there. What else does he need? Another five to become 175? He needs another 5, and then he'll become 175. You can just look at, look at what you did in your LCD. Or if you're not comfortable with that, just go ahead and divide. Just divide the common denominator by the old, divide by 35. It'll tell you you need a 5. So 5 top and bottom, so then this makes 55. Everybody with me there? Everybody see what happened? And then take... Um, <clears throat> Take the 175 and divide that one by the old denominator. 25. You can tell by the chart, 25 is right here. 5 times 5, what is he missing? 7. He needs the other 7. That's what, that's what it'll tell you. You need a 7 to make the common, to have everything the common has. So multiply top and bottom. The top is 28. The bottom makes the common. That's why we're doing it. And there we go. We've made both fractions have the same denominator. And we haven't changed the fractions. We just changed the way they look. Right? We've multiplied top and bottom. Isn't that good? Now we can add them up. Put 
Bless you. Uh, 55. Is that 70, 83? 83 over 175x. And we're done. Questions on that one? Are we good? All right. I'm going to keep moving. You stop me if you want. So, number five. So, I'm going to make them X's again. So, here we go. So, 6 over X minus 1 plus 6 over X plus 1. So, we're trying to add those two fractions. How do we add those two fractions? Well, we, we got to make the bottoms the same, right? That's how we add any fractions. We got to make the denominators the same. So, <clears throat> x minus 1 is a glued package. Remember the Costco thing? This is a glued package, glued package. Um, so, therefore, we can't separate those. So, to make the two denominators the same, I'm going to basically have to come over to this guy and give him what the other one has. I'm going to give him what he's missing, what the other one has. Right? I'm going to compare to the neighbors. That's, that's not what you're supposed to do, right? You're not supposed to look at your neighbors because then you'll want what they want or what they have, right? My neighbor, I already do though, my neighbor has a much nicer car than me. Way, way, way. Well, everybody has a nicer car than me. I, than the current car I drive. I don't know if you've seen me in the parking lot. I've got an old tan family van. It's, it's the old one. We, my wife has the new one. Anyway, and not only is it just old and it's a van and it's beaten up and I eat breakfast in it every morning on the way to work and, and it smells and I never wash it. And um, not only that, my, my, my teenage, my oldest daughter, who's 19, learned to drive using it because it was the old one. So I said, honey, you just use this one. So from 16 to 19, and, you know, she's that, that daughter, uh, Emma Girl, she's got a lot of great skills. She's an excellent student. She's, she's got into Cal Poly. I'm very proud of her. She's a good worker. But driving is not her skill. And so she did lots of bumper cars in those first year of learning to drive. And so it's got all kinds of dents all over it. And I wasn't going to pay a dime to fix any of it because it's just an old beater. Who cares anyway? So that's the car I drive back and forth. So my neighbor... As I look across, my very next door neighbor, he has a Mustang GT, like the souped up kind, not just the normal Mustang, like with the super engine, the $50,000 vehicle, I think it is. So he's got the hood open, you know, he comes down the street with the engine revving, right? Parks, you know, and it's right next to my family van. So I could look at the neighbors and want the car that he has and think, why does he drive that and I drive this? What's happening here? I think it has something to do with the fact that, that he has one child and I have five. I think, I think that's causing some economic differences in the way we can spend our money. So anyway, um, it doesn't help me to look at my neighbor's car. So this is what we're doing here. We're looking at the other denominator, taking what they have. So this one, give him X plus one. Give him what the other guy's got, top and bottom, and then go to the second one and give him what the other guy's got. Like I could give my neighbor a couple of my kids if he gave me the car, right? <laughs> All right, so X minus one, and the bills that come with those kids. X minus one, top and bottom, like that. So now then they're the same. See how we've made them the same now, right? We just give them what the other guy has, and then they're the same. We've made the denominators common, the same. Everybody see it? That's the main thing we're gonna do in this section is give them what the other guy has to make them the same. See how both denominators now have an x plus 1 and an x minus 1. An x plus 1 and an x minus 1. Both denominators have the same stuff. So they're common, aren't they? We've made common denominators. So come on down, common denominator, x plus 1, x minus 1. Like that. Like that good? Distribute, 6x plus 6, plus, and then distribute here, 6x minus 6. 
let me let me write the steps we're doing here just to help. So what what is it we're doing? We're multiplying <clears throat> top and bottom. by what is missing, what your neighbor has that you don't have, but what is missing. Step two, finish the top, leave the denom. Yeah, does everybody see how we're, we're multiplying out the top but not the bottom? Do you notice that? Right? I'm not, I'm not foiling the bottom. I'm not going X and, you know, I'm not doing all that in the bottom. <clears throat> I'm just leaving the bottom as it is. Why? Because it's common denominator. I'm happy with it. I did the work to make the bottoms the same. I don't want to mess with the bottom anymore. Once I have common denominator, just leave the bottom alone. But the top, I need to uh, finish it up. i got to multiply and now gather like terms. 6x, 6x, 12x. Positive 6 negative 6, cancel. And now we're done. There it is. What did we do? We combined the two fractions into one fraction. We added the two fractions together to make one fraction answer. Is that good? Questions on that? So the main thing, give them top and bottom what they're missing, what the neighbor has, to make the two denominators match common. And we didn't change any fractions by doing that, right? Because I'm doing the same thing to the top as I am to the bottom, right? You see the secret? I mean, the secret there, the balance, what keeps it from, we're not changing anything because we're doing the same thing top and bottom. Is that okay? Questions before I move on from that? All right, I'm going to try to go quick, but I don't want to go too quick and lose you. So let me know. I need to talk more about it. Okay. Okay, so it's going to be 8... V over V squared minus 49 plus V over V minus 7. So let me, there's actually one extra step now. Let me, let me write it. First step is, is to factor the denom. You got to factor that V squared minus 49. And then st second step, you know, you multiply top and bottom by whatever's missing. And step three is you finish the top. Okay. So factor that denominator. So how do you factor V squared minus 49? V plus 7, V minus 7, right? Good to there. I just factored that denominator. It's an FL, right? Now, let's give them what they're missing. That's, that's step one. You know, factor, factor the denominator, did it. Step two, give them what they're missing. Now, look at this denominator. He's going to compare to his neighbor. And he's going to say, I got everything my neighbor has. That's what my neighbor does. He looks at me. My, I, got a, I got a better car than that guy. Right? <laughs> I don't need anything. But this guy, he, he needs the V plus 7. So we're only messing with the right fraction. Nothing for the left. The left denominator's already got it all, doesn't it? He's not missing anything. So this denominator is not missing anything. He has everything the other one has. But the second one, we give it the V plus 7. That good? Now, now look at these two denominators. They're, they're the same, aren't they? They're identical. They match. They're not different. Okay. So there we go. V plus 7, V minus 7. You don't, you don't need two fractions anymore. You can just make one bar because the two denominators match. 
It's common. So just go ahead and make them one common fraction. Okay, but then you got to finish the top. So the last, so we did, we did the top and bottom, what's missing? Now, step three, finish the top. How do you finish the top? Well, 8V, just go ahead and bring it down. Not, the, we didn't do anything with that, that fraction. Plus, here's the plus sign. This V is going to distribute V squared plus 7V. <clears throat> Good so far, and then finish the top like terms. It's going to be what? V squared, and then 7V and 8V, 15V, done. There we are right there, all done. Is that good? It's now making sense. Hey, um, a good question I've been asked before is, shouldn't we factor that top? Like, can't we take a V out and v, v times V plus 15? That's true, we could, but notice nothing will cancel, right? V can't cancel, V plus 15 can't cancel, so we won't bother with it. Factoring is really only useful if it makes something reduce, something cancel out. So if it doesn't do that, they'll just leave it this way. The only purpose of factoring is to get something to cancel and reduce. So we'll just leave it that way. Is that okay? Questions I can answer? So everybody see what happened. What did we do? We factored the denominator, FL, V plus 7, V minus 7. And then we did the look at your neighbors, give them what you're missing. The first one did, the first fraction didn't need anything. His denominator had everything. The other one, though, needed the V plus 7. Give it to him top and bottom, right? We're doing the same thing to the top and the bottom, so we're not really changing the fraction. Multiply the top, you know, bring down the 8V. Finish up the top, common denominator. Is that good? All right. If you're okay, I'll move on. So number seven. So, okay, it's three over V minus five plus seven over V minus five squared. Okay. <coughs> So do they give them what they're missing thing? Multiply top and bottom by V minus 5, <clears throat> right? That's what's missing. The first denominator is missing a second V minus 5. Now the two denominators match. I don't need to do anything to the fraction on the right. He's got it all. These two denominators are now identical, aren't they? They're both got two V minus 5s. Not good. Play the given what they're missing game. Keep going. So now... Finish the top. Now you can make it one fraction, right? You don't need to have two anymore. They have the same denominator. So just go ahead and make it one common denominator. Can you finish the top? Finish it up. Okay, distribute the 3. 3V three minus 15 <clears throat> plus 7V. 
plus 7. <clears throat> we good there? And then finish it up. 3v, what's that going to be? Minus 8 over v minus 5 squared. How are we doing? Anything I can say to help on that one? That good? No trouble? Give me some feedback. You guys are such a quiet group. Tell me yay or nay. Go faster, go slower. I'll just keep moving. All right. Number eight. <clears throat> x plus eight over x. Oops. Kind of scribbly there. Plus x over x plus eight. Okay. <clears throat> Same kind of thing. Got to make the two denominators the same, right? So give them what they're missing. <laughs> a, a, an X alone, a solo X is different than an X plus 8 glued package, right? So those are different. So you know what to do, right? Give this one what he's missing, what his neighbor has. And then the second one, give him what he's missing, what his neighbor has. Good, so this one's missing the x plus 8. The second one's missing just the plain x, huh? Now they're the same, aren't they? See how the two denominators both have the same two things, the solo x and the x plus 8? I've made them common denominators. Take it from there. Now finish the top. So finish the top, multiply that and gather like terms in the top. All right, so common denominator, solo x and x plus 8, and then... Then we finish the top, foil that out, x squared plus 8x plus 8x plus 64 plus, and then x times x, x squared. Good. Now, x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Gather like terms, 8x and 8x, 16x plus 64 over x times x plus 8. We're done.
that making sense? Who you can answer on that? See what happened there? So we just gave them what they're missing, top and bottom. Then we just mult I just foiled out the tops and gathered like terms, finished up the top. No trouble? Okay. That good? <laughs> I can never read you guys. You guys are not giving it a positive look like, like yeah, I got it, or <laughs> mm, like a real quizzical look. It's just a straight look. Yeah. Like, like uh, you mean like multiply at the bottom, make it x squared plus 8x? Is that what you mean? Or? Yeah, we don't have to do that. Yeah, no, just, just leave the denominator as it is. Yeah, we only finish the top. Yeah, with the bottom, as soon as we get common denominator right there, we just leave it. We don't do anything else with the bottom. Good question. Just finish the top only. Oh, did it on the multiple choice answer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. Yeah, you're right. You can still tell which one it is. You're right, they did, huh? It's, it's D, huh? Yeah, they did. We don't have to. The math Excel will take it um, typed in when, on, on one of the ones where they want you to type it in. They will take it that way. Yeah. And this is the way also you'll see it on the test usually okay. is like this. Yeah. So just leave the bottoms. Leave the denominators. You, you only have to finish the tops. Good question. Anything else? That good? All right. This isn't too bad, right? It's just a little messy, I think. This might be how you feel. Um, so y minus 3 over y plus 8 plus y plus 6 over y minus 11. Okay, there we go. So you know the deal. we got to get a common denominator, right? So multiply top and bottom by what's missing. You're trying to make the, the bottoms the same. Give them what their neighbor has in the denominator. Got to make the bottoms the same, top and bottom. in a row that were perfect, huh? All right, so give them what they're missing. We good? So this one looks over at his neighbors and says, I got I to gotta have one of them Y minus 11s. And then this guy looks back and says, I need a Y plus 8. So you give them what their neighbors have, give them what they're missing, so they're, they're the same. So the two denominators match now, don't they? Completely the same. Same two things. Okay. So now that now I'm not going to mess with that denominator. Once we have the common, just leave it be. Now we've got to do the top. So finish up the top, which means multiply everything on the top out and gather like terms, huh? So boom and a boom. Get y squared minus 3y minus 11y. 
plus 33, and then this, boom and a boom, plus y squared, plus 8y, plus 6y, plus 48. Is that good? All that mess, couple foils there. Right? So remember, you finish up the top, huh? We leave the bottom. I'm not going to foil the bottom. Just leave everybody get the hang of this. But once we have that common denominator, we leave the denominator. We don't do anything else with it. But the top, we do. The top, we foil out. And we got to finish up the top up here. So let's gather like terms. Bring it over here. So the bottom, again, the bottom's not changing. Just leave it be. But what's the top? Y squared and Y... Whoops, I missed it. <laughs> Supposed to be y squared and y squared. y squared and y squared is 2y squared, right? 1y squared, 1y squared, 2y squared. And then minus 3 and minus 11 is minus 14, plus 8, and plus 8. Oh, plus 4. They all cancel, huh? The y, the regular y's exactly cancel. Minus 14 plus 14, huh? They're gone. 33 and 48. What's that? Uh, 81? And we're done. Is that okay? Is our final answer there? Just finish up the top. How y'all doing? Any questions? It's all making sense? All right. Signs now. A little bit. Not much, but a little bit. So, 8, 6 plus 1 over minus 6. What should we do without minus sign on the bottom of the fraction there? We can just move it up to the top. Remember how we learned that a minus in a fraction, it, if there's just one of them, doesn't matter where it's at. Top, bottom, front, it's all the same thing, right? So you can just move this minus to the top, huh? So it'll become 8, 6 plus negative 1, 6, which is just 7, 6, and we're done. Fine to leave the top bigger, doesn't matter. So that's all, right? It's just a subtraction, really. That minus in the bottom, we can just move it to the top or the front. Whatever you want, doesn't matter, just subtract. Okay. Now, they're going to do that with letters and letter packages, that same concept. Let me show you. So they're going to give 9y plus 8 over y minus 9 plus 7y over 9 minus y. Okay. See how that one in the right is turned around right here? Let me write a note about that. We don't want that. When the letter is subtracted at the back, multiply minus 1 top and bottom. So, that's what you got to do. So when you, have a, when you have a letter subtracted in the back like that, you don't want that. You want, because we want the letters in the front, don't we? We like to put the letters in the front. And we, and we have to make it match this other one because we got to make the two denominators common, same, don't we? So, come over here. And multiply top and bottom of just that fraction by minus 1. Everybody see what I'm doing there? Because I'm trying to make those two denominators the same, common, common denominators. That is what I have to do don't, to add fractions, huh? So I've got to make them the same. So minus 1 is what will do it. Do you see how that works? Like, look what will happen on the bottom. If you take that minus 1 and you're going to distribute to both of them, right? You get minus 9 plus y, which is the same as y minus 9, isn't it? Everybody see what happened? Remember, remember, order doesn't matter, really. Really, order doesn't matter, but signs in front matter. So whenever you move something around, remember, you take your baby with you, right? When you, when you move around anything that has a minus in front, that minus is going to go with it, or a plus in front, plus is going to go with it. So when I take that positive y and move it to the front, it's still got a positive y front. When I take the minus 9 and move it to the back, it's still got a minus in front of it. 
right? So you can reorder stuff all day long as long as you take the sign in front of them with them wherever they may go. So you see why we know that's the same then? Negative 9 plus y is the same as plus y negative 9, isn't it? Just different order. The order doesn't matter. The signs are all that really matter. So that's y minus 9 there. Okay, so what? Well, that, that made it turn around, didn't it? That made it match the other one. That made those the same. You see why we're into that? So, okay, wh where are we at now? So the, fir the first one, no changes at all. 9 y plus 8 over y minus 9. Now, what about the second one? The second one is negative 1 times 7 y. That'd be negative 7 y over now y minus 9, like the other one. Equals, everybody good to there? I've made the two denominators identical, haven't I? Made them the same. Right, common denominator y minus 9. Now, what happens here? 9y minus 7y? Just combine like terms. So 9y minus 7y is 2y and then plus 8. And we're done. Is that okay? Questions I can answer on that one. Is that good? All is well? Why don't I factor the two out of the top there? I could. Nothing good will happen, right? You could take the two out. Nothing will cancel. So who cares? Don't bother with it. Just leave it like that. Factoring is only beneficial if it makes something cancel. So everybody see what we did there. One more time. Let me run over it again. So what did I do? I looked and I said, this letter's at the back. Don't want that. Subtract it at the back. Multiply top and bottom by minus 1. The top became negative 7y. The bottom, it, it distributed to both minus 9 plus y, which is the same as y minus 9. It turned it around. Now they have a common denominator. So I never needed to give them what they're missing. Or, yeah. It's right, because they they're the same now. So there we go. And now just finish the top. There we go. All right, so letter subtracted at the back. Multiply top and bottom by minus 1. Shall we try one of those? So here we go. So we've got x minus 4 over x squared minus 64 plus... 4 minus x over 64 minus x squared. All right, so same thing. Here it is, letter subtracted at the back, right? We don't like that. So what are we going to do right away? We're going to multiply top and bottom by minus 1, aren't we? Want to turn that around. So go ahead, do that. Multiply top and bottom by minus 1 for that fraction because we don't like that letter subtracted at the back.
So what do we got? x minus 4 over x squared minus 64. And then the minus sign, right? What's going to happen? This minus sign is going to distribute here. It's going to, it's going to go boom, boom, minus 64 plus x squared, which is really x squared minus 64, huh? And the same thing on the top, boom, boom, minus 4 plus x, which is x minus 4. They're the same. Look at that. Everybody see that? See what happened there? When I multiplied minus 1, top and bottom, and it distributed, distributed, right? My, on the top, it's minus 4 plus x, which is x minus 4. The bottom, it's minus 64 plus x squared, which is x squared minus 64. And what does that equal? Well, common, don't, don't, don't do anything with the bottom, right? The bottom is common. We don't actually add the bottoms, do we? It's common denominator. The tops we finish. X and X, 1X and 1X, 2X, minus 4 and minus 4, minus 8. There we go. Is that good? You might wonder, I would if I was having a win, but shouldn't we factor these guys? It won't go anywhere. I mean, I'll just do it real quick if you want to see. If you factor that top, take out a 2 x minus 4 at the bottom would be x plus 8, x minus 8. Look, nothing's going to cancel, huh? The x plus 8, x minus 8 <clears throat> has nothing in common with 2x minus 4. So, so there's no point. There's no point in factoring because nothing cancels. So skip it. We're just done right here. How are we doing? Anything I can say to help? Is that good? Yeah, this, this is simplified. It'll, it'll take this. It yep. yep. That is simplified. You know, it doesn't mean you have to factor further. Factoring is only beneficial if it makes something cancel. If nothing cancels, it's not simpler. And Math Excel knows that. And this is the way it'll look on the test, too. So you want to be comfortable with that. The multiple choice, it'll, it'll be that way. So I don't want you to think on the next test, hey, they didn't factor it. I better use none of the above or something. No, no, no. That is simplified because nothing else cancels. So who cares about factoring? Factoring is not more simple if it doesn't let something cancel. Is that good? Questions on that? All right. So again, it's all about if you got the letters subtracted at the back, multiply top and bottom by minus 1. Okay. So... x plus 4 over x minus 4 plus 2x minus 1 <coughs> over 4 minus x plus 2 4x minus 1 over x minus 4. Okay. There we go. So what's, what's the need of that one? <clears throat> what needs to be done on that one? Yeah, it's the middle one. This, this is the one that's having the issue, huh? Because he's got the X subtracted at the back. Everybody dialing in with me there? So that's the one we need to turn around. So what? Well, that means multiply top and bottom of that one. So can you take it from there? Maybe I'll wander around and see if I can be a with the big bad 14. All right, there it is in all its glory. Why? Plus six over y minus seven or y plus seven y minus seven plus 
3y minus 7 over y plus 7y minus 7 plus y minus 6, y minus 7 on the top. Bottom is 7 minus y, y plus 7. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, what's the deal with this thing? Well, the, the three denominators are almost the same, right? Y plus 7, Y minus 7, Y plus 7, Y minus 7. Uh-oh. He's the problem, isn't he? In particular, it's this one, right? That one is turned the wrong way. We've got to flip it around. We've got to have the letter in the front. Then all three denominators will be common. They'll match. We can finish the top. Okay, so we got to get that one to turn around. So how do we get it to turn around? Well, multiply by minus 1. We've learned that. Minus 1, top and bottom, right? But what does it do when you've got parentheses? I mean, I mean it goes boom and a boom, makes that minus 7 plus y. Yeah, that we know. But does it also go to the other one? Does it go... To, to this one and this one? No. Why not? Well, if you think about it, that's never what distribution is done. I know it probably doesn't look that way to your eye. Let me show you with some number examples, but first let me give you the big idea. Whenever you distribute, you only, you only cross a times barrier one time. Did that make any sense? So now if I go over here, if I go 2 times 3 times 4 versus 2 times 3 plus 4. Let's talk about the difference in those two. You know how to multiply 2 times 3 times 4, right? You've done that before. 2 times 3 is 6, times 4 is 24. No big deal, right? Notice you do not distribute. That would be wrong. Is everybody with me? You don't go 2 times 3 is 6, and then the 2 times the 4 is 8, so it's really 6 times 8. That'd be 48. That's not right. Do you see how it's not right to distribute times and times? You distribute across a plus sign or a minus, not times and times. That's never been the rule for distribution. Do you see that? Yeah, this would be 6 plus 8, 14, but not times and times. In other words, you only, whenever you multiply distribution and stuff, you only cross the times wall once, right? I cross the times wall right here. Boom. This is crossing a plus. So I don't cross this times wall and then cross another times wall. That would be wrong. That's just not correct. It's not what 2 times 3 times 4 is. You with me? So coming back over here, when I do this minus 1, I'm going to go boom and boom. I cross that times wall. I don't also cross the other times wall. Right? This is like 2 times 3 times 4. It's three things multiplied. How do you multiply three things? Well, how do you multiply three things here? You do the first two things, get an answer, and then multiply the last thing, right? Just like you'd multiply 2 times 3 times 4, right? I, I say right a lot, don't I? I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm not hoping that that just makes sense. I'm just like, isn't that what we've always done? I'm not doing something weird here, right? There comes right again. So it just always comes out of my mouth. But isn't that true? Maybe I can do another phrase. Isn't that true? Isn't that what we always do when we multiply three things? We just do the first two. So, that's what we do here. We just do the minus 1 with the y minus 6, the first 2. Don't go to the y minus 7. Same thing on the bottom. Just go to the first, just do the first 2. You leave the other one. That's what you do when you multiply three things. Okay, so that, it looks funny at first, but if you think about it, that is really what we do. It's easier with numbers than it is with all these funny letter packages everywhere. Okay, so what does that give us then? That'll... That'll make minus 7 plus y is really y minus 7. Just change the order. So, what does that mean? That means we have one big common denominator which now has y plus 7, y minus 7. They all have that now because I multiplied negative 1 times that guy. Turned it around. Good? 
So when you multiply the minus 1, it just goes to the first parenthesis. You don't cross two parenthesis barriers. You never do. Never have, never will. Same thing on the top. We go to just the top, so that becomes what? Negative y plus 6. And the, and the uh, second one is unaffected. You know what? I'm going to run. I'm going to totally run out of room here. So let me, let me scoot this all up. I'm going to have a little more room. So, so I'm just going to start from here. Bring down the y plus 6. Bring this one down. I'll distribute in a minute. And then bring this one down. The minus 1 distributed to be... Oh, you can't see it there. Huh? It's all those other stuff's in the way. Oh, I don't like this problem. I don't have any room to write. Come further down. One more time. Down to here. Okay. Y plus 7. Y minus... Everybody see what I'm doing? I'm taking the first. I'm bringing it down. Taking the second. Bring it down. And take this part and bring it down. What is it? Negative. Let me change the color so you can see it clearly. Negative y plus 6, y minus 7. And so then i got to FOIL those out. Cross-cancel. Cross-cancel. Uh, Cross-canceling, good question. It's only allowed when times is in the middle. <coughs> really good question. Um, you, you know what I mean? So in other words, I cannot cancel that y minus 7 with that y minus 7. Because there's a plus. Everybody with me? It's a good question. Yeah, cross-canceling is only allowed with times in the middle. Think about just normal fractions. A half and two-thirds. If you could cross-cancel, they would add up to only be a third. How could a half, which is more than a third, and two-thirds add up to be only one-third. That's just not the truth, is it? So you're, you're not allowed to cross-cancel with adding or subtracting in the middle. It's only true with times. So good question, no. We can't cross-cancel here. What's that? Um, what, what are you saying? Oh, just this one with the one right under it? Good question. Why, that, that's, that's legal. That's allowed. You're right. You can totally do that, but it's not helpful. It's like driving home and circling the block 10 times before I pull in the driveway. It's not illegal. Cops won't write me a ticket, but it doesn't get me home faster. Why? Why is that not good? Why wouldn't I want to do that, even though it's legal? Because I'm trying to make what denominators? Common. That'll wreck it. It won't match the others, and I'll have to fix it. Remember, we're trying, we want to keep them all the same. We don't want to mess with the denominators. We don't want to cancel anything out of them. We, they're the same now. We're happy. We're like, oh, good, good, good. They're the same. Don't touch them. They're the same, right? We want common. Remember that? Don't lose the main point. The main point is the denominators are now matching. So we can make them into one fraction, right? Everybody seeing that? You've got, that's why, that's why we're doing this minus one times this guy, because he wasn't matching. But now when we do it, that turns him around, and he's now y minus seven. He now matches the others. The three denominators are now identical, so one big fraction, right? So we don't want to cancel any denominator stuff. At this point, we'll wreck that perfection we've established. So is that good then? So I'm just multiplying top and bottom by minus one. Turn this guy around, right, because it's negative seven plus y. Turns it around. We don't go to the other parentheses we talked about. Do it on the top as well. Minus y plus 6. Now I've got to distribute, distribute, gather all the like terms. I've got a mess here. So it's going to be y plus 6 plus, and this is going to distribute, distribute, 3y minus 21, right? And then this is going to go boom and a boom and a boom and a boom. What are we going to get here? Minus y squared. Be careful with your signs. Plus 7y plus 6y minus 42. 
Yeah, over the common denominator. Y plus 7, Y minus 7. I'm ready for this problem to end. Equals. Now, what's the top? Finally, in the top. Circle them as we go. Minus Y squared. 1Y and 3Y is 4Y. And 13Y is 17Y. And 6 minus 21 minus 42. I don't know, minus 15, minus 30, 15, minus 57. Is it minus 57? I think we're done. I want to be done. Is that, oh, good, that answer's there. It's, it's, wait, where is it? Yeah, there's some 57s. It's looking right. It's B, isn't it? It's B indeed. There it is. Is that okay? Everybody see that mess? So again, what do we do? Minus one top and bottom. Made this negative seven plus y, y minus seven, so it matches the others. Do it on the top as well. Negative y plus six. Distribute, distribute, gather like terms. Big, ugly mess. We'll do one more and we'll take our break. We'll finish the section. Questions on that one though? Are you happy about that one? There we go. In fact, I'm just going to, I'm going to recopy to Blake's room where I have room. 15, 6 minus P, okay. So number 15, 6 minus P over, what is it? 9 minus P squared. And plus P plus 3 or P minus 3. I think I have that right? Yep, 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 yep. All right, so there is number 15, last one. Try that one. So minus 1, top and bottom of the first one. Everybody seeing that? Because the letter is subtracted at the back, right? Anytime the letter is subtracted at the back, we multiply top and bottom by minus 1. Everybody with me? Everybody seeing that? We don't want the letters subtracted at the back. So we multiply top and bottom by minus 1.
Pretty good with that. So minus one top and bottom. Minus one top and bottom. And then we're going to factor this one. It's going to be P minus 3, P plus 3, FL, right? Good to there? This, is this good so far? So, again, we, we don't ever want the letter. We can't have the letter subtracted at the back. So I multiply top and bottom by minus 1. That turns it around. Then I factor, and now I gotta play the give them what they're missing game, look at your neighbors. And so the second one needs a P plus three, top and bottom, then these two match now, don't they? They both have P minus three, P plus three. They match. Come on up here. Common denominator, P minus three, P plus three. Okay, and so what does that put on the top? Well, this first part, which is minus 6 plus P, and the second part, which distributes, plus P squared, plus 3P, plus 3P, plus 9. Everybody good there? I just distributed this, foiled it. Pretty good with there. You change the color if that helps. Okay, so now putting them all together, p squared, one p, three p, three p, one p, seven p, nine minus six, three. There we go. Questions on that one? Is that one okay? That's the end of the section. Are we good with that? Anything I can answer? All right, I'll ship this out to YouTube. Let's take our break, huh? Ten-minute break.